Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess. The Goddess Next Door takes on the threat of a deadly digital diva driven to destroy the world in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess featuring a bonus pin-up and the other two books in the Cyber Goddess saga at online bookstores everywhere today. In a previous video, I talked about how legendary comic book writer Alan Moore has asked DC Comics and Warner Brothers Discovery to send his film and TV royalties to the maligned nonprofit organization Black Lives Matter. Now, Alan Moore's reasons for donating his film and TV royalties to the maligned organization Black Lives Matter is because he believes that his recent movies and TV adaptations don't stand by the original principles of the source material. Now, I believe the real reason that Alan Moore is out here wanting to send his film and TV royalties to Black Lives Matter has nothing to do with the films standing by the original principles because when I watched Watchmen myself, it was a very faithful adaptation to the original comic books. I believe the real reason why Alan Moore wants to donate all of these film and TV royalties to Black Lives Matter is because he's feeling extremely guilty about what he believes was the damage that was done to the genre of superhero comic books by his 1986 maxi series Watchmen. Now, Alan Moore has said in numerous interviews that comics were something for 12-year-old boys, and he believes that superhero comics were something that were supposed to give 12-year-old boys an escape to the world. And he believes that with Watchmen, he basically took away a 12-year-old boy's ability to escape from the real world by putting in all of the realism and all of the dark themes in 1986's Watchmen. And he believes, I believe, that by making Watchmen, he wound up taking away all of the joy that 12-year-old boys got when they went out here and bought superhero comics. Now, superhero comics before Watchmen was published in 1986 were usually a world of black and white. And in that world of black and white, heroes were the good guys, villains were the bad guys, and usually in most superhero comics, usually good always triumphed over evil, and after the heroes beat the bad guys, they would go back to business as usual after a two to three issue story arc. And that all changed with the Watchmen Maxi series, because with the Watchmen Maxi series, which was inspired by many of the Charlton Comics characters like Blue Beetle and Captain Adam and Nightshade, this whole series was a world where we got a lot more realism in a superhero comic, and we got a lot of heroes who were not living in a world of black and white. No, we got to see lots of shades of gray, and in that world of shades of gray, there was no real aspect of good or evil, because you had the heroes who were basically not really good guys, and you had no real villain in Watchmen. No, because everything was gray, we saw the good and bad in these heroes, like, um... Dr. Manhattan and Night Owl and Silk Spectre and the Comedian and we really got to see these heroes basically going out here and crossing the line something that heroes really did not do in superhero comics at the time because with Watchmen we started to see that many of these heroes really were not heroic really didn't stand up for the principles that were presented in many superhero comics, and we started to see characters like the Comedian participating in the violation of the original Silk Spectre. We saw characters like, again, the Comedian murdering people, and we also saw characters like Dr. Manhattan becoming 
extremely detached and disconnected from people that he was supposed to serve. And we saw Night Owl and Silk Spectre's daughter, again, just going out here and participating in wanton violence. And we saw Rorschach participating in getting caught up in conspiracy theories as he participated in antisocial behavior. So these characters were all gray areas and they were all ver variations of good and evil. And then you had Ozymandias who was basically uh, supposed to be, he was one of these guys who was one of these elitists who thought he was going to make the world a better place. And again, he was all out to do things for the greater good, but he wasn't thinking about people at all. And that was the whole commentary as related to Watchmen. What Alan Moore was trying to do was make a commentary on what not to do with superheroes, because anybody who knows about superheroes knows that superhero comics are supposed to be about people, and it's supposed to be about people helping people. But when you look at Watchmen, superheroes stopped being about people helping people, and it was all about the heroes just doing whatever they thought was better for the greater good and becoming detached and disconnected from the people that they served. And this is something that made Alan Moore feel quite guilty because as comic, the superhero comics genre went on, instead of creators heeding the warning he was presenting in Watchmen, what happened was many creators started to see the success and acclaim that Watchmen received and they wanted to go out here and make their characters be very similar to what was presented in Watchmen. And while there were some who did understand what was going on with Watchmen, like the late great Mark Grunewald, and I would say the guys who wrote the Iron Man, like Denny, late Denny O'Neill, who wrote the Iron Man alcoholic storyline, while they deconstructed these heroes, what they wanted to say is these heroes were important because they stood for ideals and even when you strip these heroes down to the essence of themselves what happens with those heroes is that what makes them a hero is who they are on the inside that's what i got from the classic storyline captain america no more the captain and the iron man second alcoholism storyline and with both of those stories i really saw that there was this was a great work of showing the deconstruction of these heroes but with many of the, but with the Watchmen, we really didn't, with the deconstruction, people really didn't get was that when you have a hero who compromises their ethics, they really are a villain when you think about it. Because most of the characters in Watchmen, when you take them apart, they were not heroes. No, they were people in costumes who were detached from the people they served and really didn't have a connection or care for those people. That's why Dr. Manhattan could be completely detached and on another planet and not even have a concern for people or Ozymandias who had no respect or regard for human beings at all that he thought he could just go out here and take the lives of people just to just because he wanted to make things better or you had Night Owl and Silk Spectre who were just selfish and just all for themselves or you had Rorschach who was basically living in his own rose-colored reality the whole commentary of Alan Moore's Watchmen was that this is not a place you want your superheroes to be, but sadly, as we went on into the late 80s and into the 90s, what happened was many creators wanted to get the same success as Alan Moore did, so what they did was start going out here and trying to copy Alan Moore and looking to go out here and make their characters more and more detached. And I saw this go on with many of the comics that I read in the late 80s and the 90s because in the late 80s we started to see a, a lot of characters starting to be in their own worlds like the X-Men and many of the other characters they really were not interacting with people anymore no everything had been just them fighting with their bad guys or fighting each other so that's where Alan Moore starts to feel guilty because he feels that his contribution to comics really did damage to the medium of superhero comics. Now, the medium of superhero comics in Alan Moore's perception is it was a place for 12-year-old boys to escape and imagine, and he believes that this was what took was taken away 
as these comics got into more adult themes and got into more complex stories. This is what he believes happens is that the entire medium was taken away from children and children could not go out here and imagine themselves in a world of, of superheroes. That's what he believes happened with Watchmen. So that's where the foundation of Alan Moore's guilt comes from. He has a lot of guilt because he believes that the that the what book Watchmen basically did damage to the entire genre of superhero comics, and to a point it might have possibly been done because people misinterpret that work, and because they misinterpret that work, what they do is want to make every character very dark, very gritty, and they don't want to go out here and just make stories for younger readers or all ages readers like I do on the SJS Direct imprint, because. I understand that, you know, superheroes should be fun and they should be for all ages and the dark deconstructed story isn't something everybody really wants to see. Yes, people have flaws. Yes, people all have issues, but those issues are not the thing that really define a person. What defines a person is them overcoming these obstacles and that's where Alan Moore gets it all wrong as related to the entire on uh, his feelings of guilt because again the whole thing is people have to understand what they're reading and again a lot of people misinterpret Watchmen and they don't really understand what this comic is all about and again as a creator who never read Watchmen until about 2020 I, I look at Alan Moore's guilt and again he's feeling guilty about what happened to the entire superhero genre, but the superhero genre did not have to remain in this dark and gritty place and stay with this deconstructed story model. No, it could have come out of the deconstructed story model into something that would be more compelling, like I did with my created my own story model for many of my SJS Direct books, like the Isis series, the Esteem series, and the John Haynes series. I can go out, I came out, I ne again, never read Watchmen, and I don't do deconstructed story models, and when I do stories, I do them for readers of all ages, and, and as I see it, comics are not something for a 12-year-old boy, no, superhero comics are for people of all ages, and because superhero comics are for readers of all ages, they are something that allow everybody to go out here and escape to a world where they can see a world where good triumphs over evil, where they can see their favorite heroes overcoming adversity and overcoming obstacles. That's what superhero comics are all about, and that's what superhero comics can be about if we had the right people in editorial. That's what Alan Moore gets it all wrong about. He's feeling guilty because he feels Watchmen did damage to the entire genre of superhero comics. No, what did damage to the entire genre of superhero comics was a lot of people looking to chase fame. They were the ones who wanted to make superhero comics more insular, wanted to take the heroes away from people, and wanted to take the superheroes away from people because they didn't want to feel accountability to the audience. So what they wanted to do was pull superheroes into their own world. And when you pull superheroes into their own world, that's where people stop relating to them. And that's where people stop connecting with them and seeing and their stories as part of their world because these superheroes are in their own world. Now, I've gone out here and done stories like Esteemed Little Girl Lost and Isis Samurai Goddess, where I show the goddess next door and the then devilish diva out here with people. And those stories got a lot of positive reception. So I know it's possible to go out here and do stories about heroes helping people, and they will resonate with readers. But Alan Moore, he's feeling guilty because he's thinking about what happened in the past when what he really does need to do is go out here and put fingers to the keyboard because if he feels that guilty about what Watchmen did to superhero comics, then he needs to go out here and show what superhero comics are all about to appeal to a new generation of 12-year-old boys. 
That's what he needs to do as related to the medium of superhero comics is make comics for 12-year-old boys, give them that escape, give them that world of black and white, and because sitting here crying about what Watchmen did 30 years ago isn't going to have an impact on the modern comic book industry. No, Alan Moore could easily just put fingers to the keyboard for a project for his own, get a artist to work with him, and I know lots of veterans would, and go out here and create a comic with crowdfunding and possibly go out here and raise a couple million dollars for 12-year-old boys. That would be a better solution than going out here and donating your money to a maligned organization like Black Lives Matter that has been proven to be a fraud. It would be a better use of money to go out here and take your money and, 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 and give it to a black creator like myself rather than give it to Black Lives Matter, an organization that's been proven to be a fraud. Those are the two solutions I would offer to Alan Moore as related to assaging his guilt because he's feeling guilty about the damage that was done in the past. But if you want this medium to have a future, the two things that could be done to atone for that would be to, again, go out here, create a new character, put your fingers to the keyboard, create a story that you believe would be accessible to readers of all ages, and also go out here and donate some money to a guy like myself. Those are the two things that Alan Moore could do to fix the what he believes is damage and atone for the guilt that he's feeling because sitting there and donating to Black Lives Matter doesn't help black people. No, all that does is help a organization that's been proven to be a fraud to further to defraud black people. So uh, this is my, again, I look at Alan Moore and I just, I look at this plan and again, it was all about guilt and Alan Moore feels guilty about what he has done to the comic medium and he feels extremely guilty about every all the damage he believes was done but the damage really wasn't his fault. All he wanted to do was try to tell a story out here with some a bit more adult themes. Again, I've read, when I was out here in the 80s, when I was a teenager, there were a lot of comics out there with all sorts of themes. I had a Captain Jack comic with some R-rated sex scenes. Uh, there was a lot of comics out there like Miracle Man and many others out there. Again, people had different choices and many creators out here like myself, we read lots of different comics and as we read those comics, we, we took, I took a lot of them. I, some of them I drew inspiration from, like the works of the late Mark Grunewald and the late Jenny O'Neill on Captain America and Iron Man. And there were other comics that drew me into it, like, the, like David Michelini's Iron Man and many other books. Um, and I, I drew influence from them, but Watchmen really didn't have that much of an impact on me. Again, I never read it until about 2020, but when I saw the ethics of the characters, I understood that that wasn't a hero because everything I had read in superhero comics from being a boy at four years old, I wasn't seeing that type of hero being presented in, in Watchmen. And I understood it was a cautionary tale about heroes and their ethics. And that was one of the reasons why I just could not watch Avengers Endgame because that whole movie basically showed me how heroes compromised their ethics because when they created their own Infinity Gauntlet, it was them going down to the level of Thanos instead of rising to be the heroes that they were supposed to be. So when I looked at Watchmen and, and I looked at Alan Moore's guilt, again, He's feeling guilty about what was the impact of Watchmen, but the whole thing is, if you feel that badly, create a new story and inspire a new generation of 12-year-olds to see what a superhero is really all about. Now, my first comic, John Haynes at Death's Door, is available on lulu.com right now, and if you want to pick up a paper copy of the Death Store, you can find it on Lulu by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to pick up some of my action-packed fantasy fiction, like the Isis series, the Esteem series, the John Haynes series, and the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, you can find those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them at other online booksellers, like Smashwares, the iBookstore, and Google Play. 
And if you want to see me be able to make my next comic, you can send a donation to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available on Lulu, John Haynes at Death's Door. The man who rules the world takes on the Greek god of death in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes comic book. Get your copy of the first John Haynes comic at Lulu.com today. Now available on paperback and e-readers, The Temptation of John Haynes. Given to temptation and pick up this action-packed African-American paranormal romance. Get The Temptation of John Haynes on paperback and e-readers today. Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media. www.niceradionetwork.com Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.